Hi everybody, welcome to another chemistry and organic chemistry video. Some of these will, will go between the two seminars, <clears throat> and some of them will be specialist to one or the other. So we've talked about bonding, so ionic bonding, covalent bonding, polar covalent bonding. And now let's look at intermolecular forces. If you've ever had any kind of organic chemistry tutoring from me, you know that I harp on and on about this. If you understand this, what we call IMF, then everything in organic chemistry makes sense. Everything we study in organic chemistry, boiling point, solubility, volatility, melting point, is all to do with these intermolecular forces. The way we uh, determine what kind of organic Oh, what's, yeah, what type of organic compound it is, is again through these intermolecular forces. So depending on where you are in the world, you'll either have van der Waals forces, also known as dispersion forces. And these are the weakest. So if we take an atom, and again, for ease of looking at this, hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron in the outer shell, but we, we don't know where that electron is going to be. So at some point it's going to have a negative end and a positive end. And when enough of these line up together, you get an induced dipole, which lines the negative and the positive ends up. And we get an electrostatic force in here between the molecules, so intermolecular. If we think about covalent and ionic bonds, they are intramolecular, they're the bonds that hold the molecule together. This is the, these are the bonds that hold the molecules together. So, electrostatic, they are fleeting and they are weak. They are very quick to be to produced and very quick to break the bonds as well. So, dipole, dipole forces. So these are the forces between two polar molecules. So we'll negatively charged. So with two when two polar molecules line up together, so HF, then they call this attraction cause an electrostatic bond between the molecules. They are a little bit stronger than dispersion forces, but still, still pretty weak. And now we're getting into big boy territory now. So hydrogen bonds. They are the strongest of the intermolecular forces. So, we have an extremely electronegative atom like oxygen or nitrogen. For argument's sake. We have two very not electronegative enough, that would be water. Sorry, hydrogen. And now we make water. So the oxygen has two extra electrons, or unbound electrons, that can now form bonds with two more hydrogen atoms. So the oxygen, which is very negatively charged comes next to 
hydrogen atom that is very negatively charged. And we get a bond here called a hydrogen bond. So something that's bound to oxygen, such as hydrogen or nitrogen, the same thing can happen. The hydrogen become positively charged. And then another negatively charged oxygen can come up underneath and bind and create a web. Now this web and this hydrogen bonding is the reason that water does what it does and can do what it can do. If this was ever so slightly altered, we wouldn't be here. Water would freeze at like 36 degrees. At our current room temperature in Queensland anyway in the summer, we would all be frozen. So this is very important. And as you get across here, the intermolecular forces increase. The force of the attraction increases. And we will look at this hydrogen bonds and the effects that it has on it in some later videos. Thank you.